Well, let's get started. Hi, my name is Jennifer Nava Milliken. I am the director of the Center for Art in Wood. And um, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon as we continue to celebrate the exhibition Wood and Body Expressions in Contemporary Jewelry. This show is the first uh, contemporary jewelry exhibition at the Center for Art in Wood. And, um, but it is not the last. It is a small selection of um, works by 25 artists from around the world. Um, and it is here on site at the, um, in the center's upstairs gallery uh, for one, ooh, not, I can't even say a week anymore, and through November 7th. So come and visit um, or check it out online. And um, before we get started with today's talk, I just want to um, invite everyone to join me in acknowledging that the Center for Art in Wood is situated on the unceded territory of the Lenni Lenape people who were and continue to be active stewards of these lands and of the river of human beings known as the Delaware River. We humbly recognize and express our gratitude to those on whose territory we work and while we admit that this recognition is a small gesture, we hold up indigenous visibility and affirm the sovereignty for hundreds of indigenous nations who live here now and for those who are forcibly removed from their homelands. Thank you. Um, one thing about today's talk, if you like to use um, live captioning, you can um, click on the CC uh, logo at the bottom or at the top or side of your screen, depending on your device, and you will see um, captioning in English um, simultaneously happening while, um, while speaking is taking place. So that's a tool that's at your disposal. So I am so honored to recognize and to welcome today Verid Babai. Uh, Verid is a, an artist and metalsmith and a jewelry maker um, who is based in Tel Aviv, Israel. Since her graduation from the Department of Jewelry Design at the Betzalel Academy of Art and Design in Jerusalem in 1993, Verid moved to Tel Aviv and opened her private studio. Her works have been exhibited in museums and galleries like this one all over the world and have received natural, national awards such as the American Israel Craft Foundation Prize for Art and Sculpture and the coveted Israeli Ministry of Culture and Sport Prize for Design. Bered's work has been exhibited in solo exhibitions in Paris, Trieste and Zola and her, she has taught at the Bezalel Academy of Art and Design in Jerusalem and at her studio in Ranana, Israel. For more than 20 years, she has given private lessons and talks in her studio. In recent years, she has curated important international exhibitions in the field of contemporary jewelry, and I hope she'll be sharing some of that with us today. It is uh, a pleasure to welcome Verd Babai to speak to the Center for Art and Wood today. Thanks, Verd. Thank you so much. So first, I would like to thank Nava for inviting me to talk about my work. I am happy and privileged to be here with you and to share some thoughts about art and about life. And I hope that you will enjoy the talk. So after my graduation from Bezalel Academy of Art and Design in the jewelry the design department about 30 years ago, I moved to Tel Aviv and opened my private studio where I work and teach as well. The studio is part of my apartment and it was initially built for metal work, but today I create in other materials as well. It was important to me to create a pleasant working space. And I could say that while the pandemic and the quarantine that we had lately, I was really lucky to have my studio at home because I could continue and work nearly as usual. I grew up in a city near Tel Aviv that at the time had lots of orange plantation and open fields. Since the city itself didn't have a lot to offer us as teenagers, we used to spend the free weekends in those fields, enjoying the walk, and getting to know the microcosmos 
that were revealing to us and kept changing with each season. Before TV and smartphones, we spend much time outdoors with friends and family. This is my brother. Today he's without a mustache. <laughs> Uh, who was collecting butterflies and other insects in those fields. And you can see here the orange plantations. My grandparents lived in a house with a garden just on the next street where they planted various fruit trees. The grapefruit tree that you can see here near the sidewalk was our favorite of all. My uncle fixed two shelves among its branches and we loved to climb on it and hang from its branches. In our imagination, the tree turned up to a starship. We called it, of course, the Enterprise. I think that for kids, being on the top of a tree and looking on everybody from above, it's really an uplifting feeling. I felt safe and joyful because the tree was a protector entity and a loyal friend. Maybe this is the reason why, even before I started to work with wood as a material, I have created pieces which relate to trees. In this work that is called Words and Trees, I wrote a text talking about the trees that had an impact of my life, like the grapefruit tree that unfortunately was cut off a few years later in order to widen the main road. The work is made from paper and fine silver wire, which I form to hold the paper branches, as you can see here. Normally in silver smithing, the metal serves as a solid material to protect the gemstone. Here, I like the idea that the precious material is a paper and I use some metal technique to shape the paper branches. I live in a country where most of the trees keep their leaves during winter. And I was impressed by the naked trees that I saw when I visited in Europe. It seemed dramatic and somehow, even for a moment, I felt kind of sadness. Some of the branches that I saw had, had a dark color, which made it look striking in light of the cloudy sky. And I made a series of objects which try to capture my impression from those vast fields of bare trees and commemorate the wintry mood while waiting for spring to come. The pieces are made from silver and the technique that I used here is hammering and soldering. I love those trees as well, but later on I discover that those ornamented balls, that's how I thought it was, were created by a plant parasite that is called ghee. Even though for a jeweler's eye, it was remarkable. For these pieces that I titled Losing Time, I soldered hundreds of silver balls, which reminds a morning dew. But I used the little drops as well in order to create an ornamental rhythm and a way to increase the reflection of the silver. My working method over the years deals with locating, identifying, and representing a certain detachable logic which I found in nature. Translating this logic into material is about trying to understand both. I made this object after I found a piece of trunk which fell from a palm tree and it looked like a system of veins. I thought about the things that are getting thinner with the years like hair, skin and veins and it led me to create a series of work with wires in different diameter. I decided to build objects that will start from a segment of wire 
and solder to it wires that becomes thinner and thinner in a continuous line. The passages between the thicknesses are for me the interesting points that resemble broken moments throughout life. I love to grow plants in my balconies and it became a vital part of me and of my identity. Even some birds adopted the balconies and feel safe to nest beneath its branches. And it feels so serene to live in the middle of a hectic city, but you have another screen which is alive and joyful. My little garden and the trees in my neighborhood became an integral part of my artwork. And here, for example, I used shapes from some leaves in creating the series White Forest that deals as well with the fragility and delicacy of aging. For me, it felt a bit like losing the pigments of life, as if the forest lost its green shield, but keeps its beauty and nobility. This group of work is made from silver and aluminum and an oil paint, which covers only part of the metal, because I didn't want that the paint will prevent completely the metal from aging. The coal trees deals with issues such as contrast and completion. I made a series after for a group exhibition in the Geological Museum after a summer where a huge fire took place in a vast forest in the Mount Carmel in the north of Israel. I was not far away but when it started and watched it while driving with a friend. It was frightening to see. So a predecision that I took in this work was to give the same attention to the precious material, which is the quartz stones and the filling polymer that consider as less valuable. By supplementing the defect of the quartz stone with a polymer mixed with a black pigment, I created a new hybrid of the mineral and synthetic world, which remains in distance in identity. On 2011, I was invited to take part in a group exhibition that gathered craft and design creations in wood. I tried to make some pieces from blocks of wood, but I wasn't pleased. One morning, I was walking in my neighborhood and saw some twigs and palm inflorences lying on the ground. And I had the instinct to pick them up and bring them to my studio. It was easier for me to connect to them because they still carried the personality of the tree from which they came from as if the heartbeat of the tree was still there. I thought that I need to make the smallest gesture that will turn the piece into a wearable object, but will keep clearly the identity of the plant. I had no idea how to work with wood, but I followed my intuition and I soaked the twigs in hot water. Then I used my bracelet and veil to form the circle and let it dry for a few days. It reminded me that as a child, I used to take a leaf of grass, rolling it across my finger and create a momentarily ring. It felt like gathering nature and culture in a simple act. A year later, I was invited by Dir Nava to take part in the wonderful exhibition which he was curating in Tel Aviv. The expo was titled Foreign Body, and I had the pleasure to show the wood jewelry and continue to develop the series. I made bracelets and rings, and on 2013, I exhibited them in my solo exhibition in Paris, alongside metal jewelry and photos of trees. 
it was moving to see the visitor's reaction towards the wood jewelry. In a surprising way, they were more touched by it. Perhaps the presence of nature, which is evident in this jewelry, and the association with bird's nest was the reason. As a person who was working with silver most of her career, it was a bit unsure to put them together, but happily it turned out to be wonderful. Imitation is considered to be one of the way of learning. And I love the crossroads between my metal work and my wood work. And the fact that I could use tools, <coughs> sorry, like anvils, solid wires, and other equipment that serves me for both. Over the years, I can say that working with wood influenced my silver jewelry. And I like that because I was always seeking to give the metal an organic and warm feeling. On 2016, I was invited to submit a work for a group exhibition that was called Pencil. Each artist got five pencil and had to make a piece with them. While sharpening the pencil, I realized how beautiful and delicate the pencil shaving was. And I started to compose them in a way that reminded me butterflies and fungus. I noticed that every shaving looked different. It has its own texture, own color and behavior become, because it comes from a different tree. And the feeling was a bit like painting or drawing, but in an unusual way. If you remember the slide with my brother and his butterfly net, maybe the connection starts there. Encouraged by the result of the pencil shaving box, I was motivated to continue my work with pencils. And after some trips to the Negev region in the south of Israel and visits in the small crater, I wanted to transform the impression that I experienced in front of the unique topography, the layer structure and the colorfulness into the tiny scale of the pencil shaving. So I reduced the palette of two warm colors, mostly browns, red, and oranges. I like the idea to encapsulate my memories into a fragile and thin wood object. And I designed wood boxes that will contain those delicate pieces. Later on, I was interested in building forms that will have a volume and will emphasize the structure of the layers. So I created bigger pieces, which composed of many pencil shavings, which I glue one after the other. But I kept working with the, color, with the colors that echoes the rocks palette from the craters. I had to find pencils that will keep well the lead part while sharpening. And it wasn't easy, but eventually after trying several brands, I found what I need. I named this series Erratic, and it was the main group of work in my second solo exhibition in Paris four years ago. Erratic in geology means a rock that was carried away on a glacier and could be found hundreds of kilometers away from his creation place. For me, artists are sometimes an interesting reflection of that term because they bring original ideas to the society which they live in, even though their vision could be regarded as odd or strange at that time. I thought that it could be interesting to integrate the photos that I took from the Negev region and the pencil shaving work. So I made a series that was also part of the exhibition. In the recent years, 
I dedicate part of my time to photography. I love to combine it in my work and just practice it. It's interesting because in art, you have to create a piece from zero, from a black point. But in photography, you cannot take a picture of something that do not exist. So it always relates to something that is there in front of our eyes. These beads I made for a group exhibition that took place in the Museum of Islamic Art in Jerusalem as a dialogue between an ancient item from the museum collection and the comp contemporary jewelry created by each artist. I made those beads that were inspired by the desert rose crystal stone and they relate to ceramic beads that serves against the evil eye that caught my eye in the museum. This is why I entitled them Touch Wood. I could not have imagined that I will work with pencil for some years now, but it's still a fresh word to me and it's fun. And as you can see, they became part of my studio. The differences in working with them and working with metal starts from the point of choosing the raw material itself. When you buy a sheet of silver, for example, it will always look the same, while each pencil has already its own mark and identity. I think that I became an expert in examining pencils and sharpeners all over the world for very close. And my friends know that if they come across an interesting pencil, they, bring it, they better bring it over to me. And of course, it's another good reason to enter art shops, which, which I love so much, and look for new items. Usually, I sharpen each pencil and put it in a different box. As you could see, I use those with a front window that usually serve as a jewelry gift box, which is nice. So I have a bank full of shaving and it's a good start to a new world. Each shaving is different and I like to observe them before I determine how to put them together. Then I start to link them and to build a certain form. There is something ceremonial in this work because unlike metal work in which the hands become greasy and dirty, here I have to wash my hands every hour and to be very careful. I cannot even sneeze near the pencil shaving or to open the ventilator or the window in a stormy day because they will all just fly away. Now I will show you my recent series that is called Mori. In Japanese, Mori means little forest. And there is something that appeals to me in that title because in a way it relates to the nature of my work. Those two pieces were made with two different pencils, gray and black, but with a reverse color ration. I am using as well a special fabric in the background of the pencil shaving work that gives the work another temperature and texture. Most of the pieces are not wearable, but serve as a wall object. One rule that I keep is not to add an additional color to the work. I have decided from the beginning to use only the pencil itself. So all the golden lines that you can see here comes from the display of each shaving. The same thing in those pieces and creating the delicate drawings with the shaving is the thing that guides me, the broken line. The big challenge with the shaving is to build a three-dimensional object with it. 
because their fragility and original character, it's not obvious, but possible. The first, the first layer, of course, is the most hard to form, but I'm using some metal tools that help me to press the shaving between them and create the curve that I want. It's interesting how sometimes we could follow a memory or try to bring a hidden image alive. There is something on this graphite lace that I created, for example, that reminds me my first crochet napkin that I made at school in those craft lessons that we had back then. And it came to my mind while creating those pieces. When you work with a certain material for some time, you begin to detect each nuance. And I like from time to time to work on monochromatic palettes. Here, for example, there are two versions of black, one from the wood and the other from the graphite. This is dependent from the current exhibition, Wooden Body, in the center of Art in Wood. And I thank you, Nava, again for inviting me. It is made from pencil shaving and silver. One of the things that I like when I wear jewelry is the feeling that I am not alone. As if there is a tangible presence which accompanies me wherever I go. Carrying on the body a fragment resource of nature could empower the spirit. The union between the material and the cultural value of a human craft is for me very strong. As an artist, contemporary jewelry combines two important issues, which I like very much. One is working with the hands. Other is the ability to convey feelings and idea through materials. The things which guide me in my work are feelings and intuition but my way of working is very meticulous, precise, even restrained. Over the years, I am using materials to form some kind of language that will reflect my inner self, as well as my continuous need of harmony with the external universe that surrounds me. In some pieces, I combine various materials like stones and metal. I like to see how they integrate and relate to each other in various levels. Here as well, I used very thin layer of magnesium that works interesting with the wood. I made this object for a group exhibition that connected a young artist with an established one. It was somehow strange to realize that so many years have passed, but some of the questions that I have regarding my choice of profession are still remain. Sometimes I think that I should have had choose biology as my occupation, but maybe I am a craft biologist who creates her floral universe with various materials. So it's a nice way to think about it. Just as an anecdote, this is my first work with wood, which I made while I was a student. It was during a stone setting course and for the free task in the, in the course, I thought that it could be nice to set a sheet of metal between the wood. It's funny because I haven't seen this work for so many years now. It was inside a, a box in a drawer and it was fun to examine it again after this long time for this presentation. But anyway, I think that jewelers love boxes and drawers. 
we cannot have too many of them. Since I work with a material that usually is considered as trash, I find it hard to throw away even the tiny tails which remains after the sharpening. So for my solo exhibition in 2017, I have turned those tails into pendants and gave them to the people who came to the opening. I like the idea that the visitors who got those pendants could write the last words with it. So to me, it was a way of sharing the material and the moments with the visitors. Now I will show you some images from my solo shows. I think that for an artist, it is the most exciting and frightening one. The way I experienced it, there are three circles in the process of, process of creation. The first circle, which is the inner and intimate search and the need to make a new piece of work. It is the most demanding and difficult and the range of feeling that I am going through is like a day and a night. Usually I'm not very easily pleased with my work. So I try and try again and try again and make more sketches. And it's really, really a long and tiring and sometimes exhausted process until I feel that the piece reflects the idea that I have in mind. The second circle is between me and my colleagues or curators that understand the field and could dialogue and enlighten some things that I could have missed. This dialogue is usually take place in my studio, so the work is still protected from the outside daylight. The third dialogue is with a white audience. It is usually taking place in the gallery or museum after the war gained her independence. It's a place to meet people that you don't always know, especially if the exhibition is abroad and it's interesting to see how they feel about your work and the things that they have to say. It could be very encouraging and uplifting and a way to connect for your work with interesting and new people. So this was my first uh, solo exhibition in Paris and you can see the photos of the trees uh, with the jewelry. This was a, a solo exhibition in uh, Trieste, Italy, in a beautiful, beautiful museum uh, that was made by the architect Scarpa. I really love that uh, natural light uh, came into uh, the space and the work could be seen as well uh, in this uh, wonderful soft light that we always, that in Europe we can find more easily than in Israel. And here, it, this was the exhibition uh, in Paris in 2017, which also combined uh, the universe that I'm trying to uh, exhibit uh, together the pencil shaving work alongside precious metals. Thank you. And uh, now uh, I will show you some uh, pieces uh, that I prepared here that uh, you could see them uh, in real, not in real, but uh, you could have more an impression about the size and how they relate to the body. So this is, for example, the pendant. Uh, actually, it's a bead from the group exhibition that I made for the Museum of Islamic Art. So we did have a question about scale. And I think while um, listing the dimensions is helpful. Sometimes just seeing the proportion of the object to the body is the most helpful in terms of intuitively understanding the size and the depth of the objects. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, this is also a piece from the twigs uh, that I collected in my neighborhood. So it could be, a, for me, it's a bracelet for men because there is something that I like uh, to see the connection between the, this object and men jewelry. Uh, here is the silver piece that I made with a little silver balls. It's actually an object, it's not a wearable one, but uh, I really like it. And uh, it's made from fine silver, so you can play with it actually, and to move it all around, open it or close it as you wish. This is one of the boxes. I took the, the cover off because I didn't want you to see the reflection of the glass, but actually you can see how the shaving is glue one to the other and you can see the volume of it. Here is another piece. It wasn't in the presentation, but it's also related to trees, which I adore. And it makes from silver and copper wire that is coated with some kind of resin. So I was kind of weaving it inside uh, some lines, which I uh, sewed inside the metal. And from the same technique, I also made a hibiscus uh, that actually I took from uh, my little garden and copied the shape of it. This was uh, about a month work because it was really, really hard to do. And I had to be, to design uh, really, really carefully all the, the lines that I sewed in order that the weaving will be perfect as I wanted it to be. Farid, could you show the back of that piece? Yes. Uh, it's nice. actually like that. Of yeah. course, that I couldn't solder it. So mm -hmm. I had to make uh, the background that will be perfect adjusted to, to the outside piece. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. And these one are the bigger pieces, which uh, combines the photo and the pencil shaving work. It, it could be a brooch if you want. <laughs> and here is just some pencil shaving. <laughs> So you can see them. It's beautiful by itself, actually. And I have to show you my collection of sharpeners. <laughs> <laughs> because I really want to, to have a, a beautiful uh, shaving. I need to change uh, the sharpeners every time. And I found really beautiful sharpeners, which makes it more fun to work because I just love beautiful tools. And in silversmithing, uh, there are so many beautiful, beautiful tools. And so I thought it could be nice to add more uh, tools to it. <laughs> And um, so those, those are effectively your tools, those sharpeners in mm -hmm. this work. Um, are there different sharpeners that produce different results? Yes. Yes. Uh, if you use the sharpeners from wood, mm -hmm. then you have a thicker sharpening. 
and you can use a regular pencil, but you use the bigger sharpener. So then you get a smallest shaving. Mm. So actually uh, you can really play with it. It looks very limited, but in fact, it's not at all. And you have many possibilities uh, to, to use and try to uh, use the imagination and creativity uh, to just play with it. And uh, it's true that in the beginning, uh, I wasn't sure if, uh, if I can uh, really present the sh pencil shaving work uh, besides the metal work, because in, in metal work, there are so many techniques and you need a full studio, well equipped to, to make your creation. Uh, the studies of silversmithing is long, and with the pencil shaving, I just started to work like that and felt that maybe, maybe it's not on the same level like uh, metal work, but uh, I, I was really encouraged by the responses of people who came and saw uh, the, the whole body of work. And I think that for most of them, it was really easier to relate to the woodwork. I think that there is something in the, in the material, the warm feeling of it. It's something that everybody, like with the pencil shaving, everybody use pencils. Maybe not today as before, but <laughs> it's still an object that, uh, everybody uh, hold in their hands once and draw, uh, write, just use them. Yeah. And, uh, and I can say that uh, today I look on pencils a bit uh, differently than before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that you do. <laughs> and you probably look at pencils differently than anyone else in the world at this point. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Um, well, I'm going to I'm going to jump in with a couple of questions, and then I know that there have been some questions added to the chat, and I'm very happy to um, to interpret those as well. Um, and I just wanted to start out with um, um, a, a couple of the things that you said. One is that you mentioned uh, turning into a craft biologist, and to that I say welcome to the world of woodcraft because I think um, if you find yourself in conversation with anyone who works in wood, they're always talking about um, you know, the, the cellular development of, of the material or what kind of infestation or, um, or damage or lack of water or lack of sunlight happened during the course of the tree's lifespan. And so this is the, these conversations which, um, describe the material that you end up working with as an artist um, are really important to understanding the material that you have. Um, but so it's it's interesting to me to have watched you develop from from a craft alchemist working in metal to a craft biologist and that and I I'm interested to hear if you've had any reflection on the way that you've kind of brought those two ways of thinking together more recently in your work. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, this is something that I appreciate and love in my work, that sometimes things just happen. I mean, you are being invited to an exhibition by a curator that has a theme, and you have to follow this theme. I think that if I, was, I wasn't taking part in those exhibitions uh, in, in Paris and this exhibition that is called Pencil, I would still work with silver and other metals. But sometimes it's just, you know, uh, you have an opportunity and sometimes there is something in you that rejects that in the beginning, as uh, at nearly what happened to me is that I was nearly said no to those exhibitions 
but then because I guess my curiosity and my uh, also I was uh, having a cataract uh, operation in my eyes, I think that it was because of this so, so many soldering because actually soldering is uh, like uh, looking at this heat. It's like looking at the sun in a way and it's damaged the eyes. So in a way I had to rethink again about working with metals and then it just happened gradually. It doesn't mean that I will work with pencils forever because I'm interested also in working in paper. And I mean, all the materials are, are interesting. It's only depends how you uh, use them and what interest do you find in them and if you feel connected to them or I mean it's just a matter of like a like other scientists or artists it's a way of examining the material in front of you and try to find yourself in this material find a, uh, some identity that is sharing with your own self and your own spirit. Um, so I think this is actually what happened uh, and, and I'm happy about it. <laughs> I am too. Uh, <laughs> um, and I, I have another question because I, I neglected in the beginning when I was introducing you to, to mention the fact that you're also a photographer and this work has made its way into um, um, your books and also exhibitions and presentations and you beautifully showed your work side by side with the images that have inspired the objects or vice versa and I think that was so distinct about your work um, and you mentioned the detail of the jeweler's eye could you talk to us a little bit about how that impacts the kind of images you make mm -hmm. Um, so I think that uh, if, if we talk about photography, I think that uh, I always love to, to take photos. And uh, if we go back to my uh, teenager's time, so one of the things that we love to do in, in my family is to go to long trips uh, or to trips in the open fields in my uh, surrounding. And, and my father bought a camera, which he called my great camera. And we took it and then my brother was the first one to buy a really a good and professional camera. And he was always the person that took the most beautiful photos. So for many years, I didn't dare to use uh, this device, but later on, um, I, uh, I just had uh, my own curiosity and uh, it started when I was at the army and I took a course in photography and we were developing the films and it was really, really nice. And then it, I started to use it from time to time but more recently in the, in the past uh, maybe five or six years, because um, I, am, um, I have two uh, issues or themes that I'm interested in. One are the birds that are coming to my balcony. And it's really like a, <laughs> a celebration of uh, birds and they are really uh, bring a lot of uh, joy to my life and the way that they are really, I mean, it wasn't, I wasn't inviting them originally, but they came because I did something right because I, I uh, have plants that they love to come and eat from. And uh, it was kind of a dialogue between me and them so this is one of the things that I really, really love to do. And the other one is um, I love to go and take photos at night uh, in urban places. So this is kind of two sides of the things that I love. 
And I think that really like uh, in silversmithing and in craft at all, uh, you have to spend a lot of time in sitting in the studio and you are just working, you know, in silversmithing, it could be like a, a radius of 20 centimeters where your whole self is just there. Mm -hmm. So the whole, the outside world disappeared and you have to be really, really concentrated and the whole universe is really, really small. And with photography, it's a bit like hunting because you need to go with your camera and to uh, hunt images. I mean, to, to see uh, scenes or to uh, experience the thing in front of your eyes. So in a way, it's an action that has a lot of movement for me. And after uh, sitting for hours in the studio, it's like completing the, 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 I don't know, it's like really the opposite, but I like to use both because I feel that the body needs also some kind of exercise. And with photography, it, you cannot just sit and wait that something will happen. You need to go and, and look for it. Mm. And, uh, and this is why I think I love to combine both. No way. It's, um, I don't think, uh, some of the people here today with us will know this already, but for those who don't, Verib has actually cultivated an entire arboretum um, around her apartment. You would never know when you look out the windows from the inside that she's actually um, on a, what, two stories up above the ground. Um, because when you look out the windows, you are completely surrounded by trees. And, um, and so, of course, the birds love to spend time there. Um, we, have, we have two questions about, about the fragility of these words. And, um, and I, I think I was expecting that this question would come up quite a bit because as, um, as a metalsmith, you were trained and, um, and you became known in your career as a jewelry maker but you haven't always made jewelry, even though you've stuck to that scale. So um, I wonder if you could explain for um, the people who are asking these questions today, how, how you kind of reconcile um, the making of objects or the making of jewelry um, in the longer body of your work, and then how you deal with that question of, of the fragility of the material in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that for me, I just ignore <laughs> the need to turn the object into a jewelry because I um, I think that the object for me is uh, uh, more complete and whole and and beautiful without any mechanism that ties him to the body. This is why when I um, make a piece of jewelry it will be mostly rings because rings is a perfect shape and you don't have to add some kind of a mechanism or an additional uh, parts that will hang it to, to the clothes or to the body and uh, i love jewelry on other people uh, i only wear this small gold ring but um, I don't know because I'm working with the hands and um, I am always you know get the hands always get dirty in metal smith so I don't feel really um, that that you know to wear jewelry is is really really a part of me I know the value of it and I, I really happy to see people wear my jewelry because I feel that there is a piece of me uh, with them. But uh, I, I relate to the size of the body and also I am like a small, <laughs> a tiny person. Uh, so this is uh, my normal proportions of work uh, to make small things. 
I don't think that I could handle really uh, to make a big object because I'm just getting lost uh, in front of it. So I don't really feel that my main issue and my main interest is to create jewelry. My main interest is to create objects that will convey feelings and ideas. And if it goes better with an object, uh, then I feel even the more um, uh, safe to make these objects fragile because I am not afraid that they will be uh, damaged or break. Uh, when somebody uh, is carrying them. For me, uh, the fragility is uh, something uh, to see uh, like a, a hanging piece or really something inside a box uh, because uh, the fragility is something that uh, I don't know why, but I'm always looking for it. I feel that sometimes the world is um, for me, uh, too noisy, uh, too fast. Uh, it's really hard for me to follow. And I always took the world in small steps, in small bites. So the fragility is something that I really like to, uh, to show because today everything is so, you know, we buy something and then we throw it away after a few days and the fragility is something uh, that comes to say uh, we are not immune and we should take care of ourselves and we should take care of nature. And um, even though some of my objects, if they will be just lying on the ground, I don't know if somebody will stop and, and take them and you know notice them. But, but for me, this is the universe that I feel safe in. And this is the universe that I, I just uh, need for my own existence. So. Well put. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to just point out that um, Ursula wrote beautifully capturing, that your work is capturing and reinventing the spirit of nature. So wonderful comment. Thank you, Ursula. Um, and nice to see you here. And um, and then I'll take I'll take one more question from Janine here, um, who is also a craft biologist. And um, and then I want to give everyone a chance to unmute and say hello. But first, um, Janine's question: Does silver speak to nature or biology in some way, or in that same way that wood connects us to it? So she's kind of pushing that question of alchemy versus biology a little bit further and asking you to, how do they come together? Uh -huh. um, I think that um, it's just a, another way to, to, look, to look on ourselves and to dig inside and to find the things that hidden deep inside. I think that when I was younger, I was most impressed by alchemism and the magic of creation uh, to take metals and to try to, uh, to turn them into something else, to um, work with materials that are difficult to, to form. And really, I think that the metal is going through so many <laughs> tortures. We twist them, we hammer them, we melt them. It's really something that uh, sometimes uh, uh, seems a bit brutal. I mean, the noise that comes from um, a studio for metal smith or uh, I mean, it's something that is, uh, I more, I related to it more in my previous years of creation. It was exciting. It was really mysterious. The first time that you melt uh, a metal, it's really magical. You really play with, with, with physics. 
and you get to learn physics by using the metals because uh, we use a fire in the stove and uh, we hammer nails to the wall, but really to deal with uh, this uh, amazing uh, material like petals and each metal has its own character, its own smell. Like when you work with, with copper and you smell your hands, they have a different smell than when you work with silver, for example. So all that was very, very exciting for me in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But today I, uh, I feel that I need warm materials in my life, mm -hmm. that I want to envelop myself with uh, softness mm -hmm. and with, uh, with some kind of, uh, with some kind of, yeah, I think that uh, softness is, is the, the right goal. And to be uh, also uh, use less force and less physical effort mm -hmm. uh, to use, to create these objects. And also there is really a, a nice thing that when you work with, with the pencil shaving, you can take them wherever you go and you create in, in other places as well. So if I uh, go to visit my mother for a few days, I can take the work and work there. And while you cannot really take your whole studio, the metal with the metal machine and everything is really, really so heavy and to take it whenever you go. So I think that I was just I think that when I look at my pieces, at my work, it's like a diary. It's like a self diary. You open the boxes and you look at the works and you can see who you were at that time when you created them. So it's kind of a, really a, a, a personal diary in material mm -hmm. where you can reflect on yourself at that time. And this is why it's very hard for me to uh, sell some of, most of my pieces, I would say, because I want to, to be able to look at them when I will be old, if I will get old. And uh, it will be like uh, something that will uh, make me happy to know that I, would, I could have done those pieces uh, with my hands and with my machines and in my studio. And it's really, even today, when I look at old pieces, I'm sometimes really, it gives me so much uh, comfort and energy and uh, encouragement. Mm. Because it's, uh, it's, it's you, it's, it's who you were yeah. at that time. And it's really nice. Thank you so much, Vera. This has been really, really wonderful. And I so appreciate your sharing insights into your work. Um, and I, I hope that um, as we go around the rest of our days or our evenings, um, that we envelop ourselves with softness. And that's something <laughs> that I'm going to take with myself as long as I can. I want that feeling around me. Um, <laughs> So uh, every, everyone who likes, if you um, want to unmute and say hi, I would love to say hi to many of you um, because it's been a while since I've seen you. It's good to see you here. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. It's so good to see hi. you. Hi. 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 Oh, look, there's Leah. There's Dania. Hey, are you? Hi, hey. hi. <laughs> Good to see hi. you all. You too. Thank you so much for joining. Hi, very really, really wonderful to see you here with us. Well done. Hi, hi Devira. I'm so happy to see hi. you. Hi. Fabulous. Thank Absolutely you. wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's really a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.
today. I said it was wonderful and interesting. Thank you. I'm not sick now, my hoes. I'm not sick now, so. I really want to thank you for, for, from the bottom of my heart. I really find it, normally it's hard for me to talk about my work and this is why I work with materials in order not to speak so much. But, uh, <laughs> but it was really uh, <coughs> and exciting and I really thank you Nava so, so, so much thank for you. giving me this opportunity. Uh, to share my life and art. <laughs> We could not ask then, for more than that. This has been such a, a moving and a wonderful presentation, Vered. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Although thank you so we much. live very near to each other, I have never seen uh, the, whole, the whole thing and, and the work that you have presented uh, overseas. So really, thank you. Because most of it uh, is a new, pieces um, this this will be together with our other talks this is going to be available um, for for your repeated viewing pleasure um, on the center's YouTube channel and then also on the woodshop the woodshed.org um, and that's in the chat as well so feel free Dania um, spoke with us last year and her talk is there so you can catch up with Dania. Um, there and also um, David Villander spoke with us a couple of weeks ago and um, Helen Drutt English and Bella Neyman and Elizabeth Esner and Caroline Gore um, talked to us about contemporary jewelry a couple of weeks ago. So there should be enough there to learn to become an expert in wood and contemporary jewelry. Expert, really? Yes, mm -hmm. it's all there. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there are so many of you here that I want to give a big hug to, um, but we will wait a couple of months. <laughs> and um, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for joining. And thank you so much, Vera. This has been really, really wonderful. The show is up through November 7th, and then we have an exhibition opening on November 5th on Friday. So come by the center or check in with us on our website, social media. Thank you, everyone. Be Thank safe. you. Thank you so much. Thank you.